race. Hey, body ready to go? Everyone ready? Be cool, be calm. Remember what we've done. Remember the bits we do at the beginning and the end of the lesson as well. Get all them things inside your head. You've got 40 minutes. Eyes down, lock in. This is Andy Smith. Andy is a physics teacher at Woodchurch High School on the Wirral. The lower years. Um, seven, eight, nine. They do uh, six weeks of lessons, then they have a test at the end. Um, years 10 and 11, it's GCSE exams. So three times a year, they have sort of big GCSE exams. Um, we just, with, with the lower years, you give them the test. I mark it, then I, I hand it back. Andrew, 93%, 3% more than last time. Shawnee, 74, better than last time. Good girl. In fact, what was that? 74. Your last one was 69. Five more. Good girl. Uh, Dan. We go through, we see what they did right, see what they did wrong. Question one, you've got someone else's paper, let's go for it. Right, so question one, we'll start with you, Sean. I get them to swap papers because if I'm spending a lesson going through a test paper and they've got their own paper, it's just quite easy to sort of drift off. So you can, you can compare yourself to how your neighbour did. So you can say, oh, he's done better than me or I've done better than him. And then see what they did as they went through. Kesha. Um, we need, next question is a little bit about heat flow. And the first question says that someone's got a fire, someone has a fire on in the room and heat is moving around the room. Question one says, when will heat stop moving around the room? What answer have we got there? When all the rooms are same temperature. When all the rooms are same temperature. That's a big tick. Did uh, Kersh get that one right? Very good. Right, next one. It says there, Damien, that heat will continue moving around the room and heat moves from where to where? Where does it move? Hot to cold. From hot to cold. Big tick there, please. Did he get that one right? Yeah. He did as well. Right, so, up to you, Connor, now. To monitor their progress and to allow them to self-assess, the students have a target sheet upon which they record the marks for each test. Normally, um, they do their test and then I mark them and then they'll be doing an activity and I'll call them out one at a time. I mean, you don't want to embarrass everyone in front of the class, so when they're doing something, you call them out one at a time, you get them to write it in. At the end of each test, they can put their mark in and they can basically assess how they've done by how their mark has done. Right, so how have we done in our tests? So, we started off on a 5.0, good test mark there, sir. Then we had a 5.4, so you went up by 0.4. Then back to 5.0, but still good marks. Now, on this last one, we got a 5.1. So, yeah, yeah, you're back up to 0.1. Now, all your test marks, even though, you know, some are up and some are down, they're all above. Level five. Now, you should be hitting level six by the time you're in year nine. So, at the moment, all your test marks above year five, uh, above level five, that's the way forward, sir. If they thought, oh, I did really well on that topic, but then they get a mark that's not so good, that mark goes down in stone so they can, you know, assess their revision. Maybe they didn't revise as, as well as they could. But on the flip side, if everything's going great and their marks are going up, or they they don't always have to go up, as long as the marks are consistent, that's good enough, because no one can keep going up and up. Then they can see how they're going, they can assess for themselves that they're making progress, and they, you know, they can see all the time, and if, I'd say mum or dad wants to see how they're doing, all they need to do is open the cover of the book, and the marks all year, and the homework marks are all there, so anybody can look at any time. Now your tests then, so, first one we had 4.8, not bad, then 5.4, good stuff. Then you drop down there to 5.0, but you're back on the up again because the one you got now is back up to 5.2. So you're on your way back up now. So you should be, by the end of year nine, sort of getting a uh, level six. So if we're hitting fives now, we're doing OK. So all three of them are above five. And you're on the way back up again, up 0.2 again. Okay, At key stage three, you, you go from a three it's to a seven in science. We used to just give them a mark, a level five, you got a level four. But that's not enough, really, because someone could get five all year and I've got, like, a 4.6 up to a 5.4, so there's a big gap there. So we ourselves uh, give it a decimal point, so the percentage on the test corresponds to um, a sat mark to one decimal place. So it's something we just do ourselves, but when they do the sats in year nine, they'll just get a straight six or a straight five or whatever. The feedback that Mr Smith gives is, like, encouraging. He's, if you've done a bad score, he'll say how to help. And if you've done a good score, he'll tell you well done stuff. The feedback that Mr Smith gives me helps me a lot because he really encourages you. If you get, like, a 5.5, it'll make you do better by, like, the games help you learn and the experiments help you learn. 
Playing games in lesson is Andy's trademark, but beneath the fun is a serious objective. Don't worry. Well, the lesson is can sometimes quite drag a bit, especially if there's no practical. So I always like to use, to do something different at the end, just something a bit fun. And then the idea is a few years ago, starters and plenaries came in. So I've kind of changed them slightly so I can use them for assessment purposes. The games help me remember a lot because because they're fun. They stick in your head for longer and then by the end of the um, Term, when you do the test, you've got everything in your head because you can track back to those games that you've been playing. Because you've got to find out what, what, what they've learned. It's easy to stand at the front and just say, right, what have you da, 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 da. And it's a bit boring, and it's boring for them, and it's boring for me. So if you just get like a little bit of interaction, get people out doing stuff, kids kind of think, oh, that's the end of the lesson, we're just going to muck about and play a few games, when it's not really. It's a sneaky way for me to see what they've learned. My favourite game is The Loop of Fury because it develops your listening skills and like your communication skills as well as remembering things and it's fun as well. On your desk there are little glass jars, right? And in your little glass jars there are little pieces of paper. Could you lift them out and pass them around so everybody's got at least one? Pass them around and everybody should have one. One table's got one less because I couldn't think of another question, but life goes on. Right, now everyone's got a little piece of paper. Now somebody's got number one. Right, so Luke's got number one. Now what happens is, is Luke reads out his question. Then somebody else in here has the answer to that question on their little card. Then you'd say your question and we go on and on and on and on and on. So listen out for your question and then it goes all the way back to Luke and then we stop the clock. So we'll try it now and we'll try it at the end and see if we can do it quicker at the end. Does that make sense? Yes? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. What is an up or down, up or down wave? Is this a transverse wave? What is the top of a transverse wave called? It's a peak. Good lad, go. What is the bottom of a transverse wave called? A trough. How do you remember these? A mountain peak is at the top, a pig eats out of the trough. What is the distance from peak to peak called? It is a wavelength. What else can you measure the wavelength? From trough to trough. If you've got like a class of say 25 yeah. and you give them two questions each, there's 50 questions on everything you've done in the topic. And it's a bit of excitement as well. Time it. Come on, come on, come on. Get it quicker, get it quicker. Go, go. And then at the end of the lesson, swap cards and hopefully we can do it a little bit quicker. It'll be very quiet. What kind of sound is a wave with a small wavelength? It has a high pitch. What kind of sound is a wave with a long wavelength? It will be long. Yes! 303. Oh, Goodness me. Three seconds. I was getting a bit hairy in the end there with three seconds. Right, pop them back in the jars, please. I think that the teachers should play games in the lesson because even though they think it's silly and everyone will mess around, it's actually not. It helps you um, remember more things for that lesson and it, it's better and it keeps you more occupied than sitting down writing stuff all the time in lessons. This next one is called the above head game. What happens is, Matthew, is we have four people out the front, right? and they get a word written above their head. Now, we've only had two lessons, so it'll be from last lesson or this lesson. And you have five lives. And you have to ask the class a question. You might be like, am I to do with waves? And for every yes, you keep a life. But for every no, you lose a life and lose a life and lose a life. If you have a guess and it's incorrect, you lose a life. The idea is to guess what you are before your five lives have gone. That's a really good one for difficult keywords and seeing how much they know about the word that's above their head. So rather than guessing what they are, they have to ask questions. But again, the whole class is involved, because if you're not stood out, you've got to answer the person's question. You've got to say yes or no to their question. I don't know if you could do that in other subjects. We're lucky in science that it is quite a lot of factual recall that you can just go through. Am I something to do with heat? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Now, I'm to do with heat flow in a solid. Am I a material that is a bad conductor. No. So how many lives have I got? I'm down to four now. Thank you. Am I to do with something about things moving in the, in the solid? No. Go on. Am I something to do with heat moving in a gas? <laughs> is she something to do with heat moving in a gas? Yeah. Yes. Do you want to have a guess? I can't remember. Okay. Am I, am I something to do with a good conductor? Yeah. yeah. Can I have a guess? Am I metal? No. <laughs> Am I a bad conductor? Is she a bad conductor? No. You asked a minute ago, you said something to do with, is it to do with, like, heat moving? And you, it is to do with, like, heat moving, and it's when 
Perhaps he doesn't want to move. When what? Um, when... It's not your go. <laughs> your... <laughs> um, I can't think. You're something to do with... Um, yeah. You were heat moving. You're something to do with convection. Heat rising. That's the one, rises. Oh. At the end, you normally, like, just want to fall asleep, but when he brings the games, it's just, like, you just, like, they're happy. <laughs> Right, first things first, on board, we have 30 little pieces of paper. Underneath each one of them little pieces of paper is something new that you've learned in science this year. Something new. Like, you came in at the beginning of year seven, I have no idea what that meant. I have no idea what that meant. I have no idea what that meant. I want you to make up a sentence with something in there. So if it said, for example, James Cole, you'd say, James Cole sits at the front. Danny, get your coat off. If the question was, coat on, you could say, Danny Butler still has his coat on. So you've got to make up a sentence. Right, who wants to have a go? Let's hear it, Blundell. That's just a simple one to practice literacy. It's good with the year seven and eight who are being introduced to lots of new, sort of new science words. Because, of course, marks on sats are for good sentence structure. If you just put down a, the word, you won't get the mark. So it gets them used to making sentences with these science words in. That'll do for me. Let's have another one. James! 15. Number 15. Can you tell me, please, sir, a sentence with the word joules in? Energy is measured by joules. I'm loving it. Let's have another one. Neville. Number 14. Can you tell me, please, a sentence with the word weight in? Weight is a force that pulls you down. Weight. Your weight is your force that pulls you down. Let's hear it, Anna. 11. Legs 11. A sentence with law of energy in. And the law of energy, you can't create it and you can't destroy it. Oh, magnificent answer. Jamie! Number 24. Number 24, we've got gravitational potential energy. There are two ways you can get gravitational potential. Put more weight on or go higher. If you've got gravitational potential energy, there's two ways to get more. Get higher or get heavier. Let's hear it, Barton. 26. Number 26. I've, I've done elastic potential twice. So we'll, we'll, we'll go on to... Ah, oh, nice easy one for you. Light energy. Light energy is energy that you get in light bulbs. Good lad. Let's have another one. Uh, let's hear it quick. Number 10. Can you tell me, please, Miss Quirk? I've got universal indicator. Um, you add it into an acid or an alkaline that changes its colour. I'm loving it. One more. Someone from over here. Well done, Miss Kappa. Number three. Number three. Lovely little bow in your hair today. Can you tell me, please? Ah, now. We did about this yesterday, and we're going to do about it today, chemical energy. Something you find in food. Everybody asks me where I got ideas from. Some of them are, like, robbed from other places, like a sentence game. It's just question of sport, really. So you just keep your eye on things, and if you think something's good on the telly or something, you think, oh, how can I... How can I adapt that? How can I use that? Quiz show, you know, if you see a quiz show and there's a certain round that's good, you think, oh, how can I adapt that in my classroom? Teachers who don't do it, they like should do because like something like you can't learn properly with like boring teachers that like go on all the time. But with like Mr. Smith, it's like like dad like wowing your face and like teachers like should always be like that. I think. <laughs> <laughs>